number of cardiac diseases in young people increasing day by day. Oh, hello. Welcome to Biotechnica. As I was just reading in the newspaper, India is under a revolution. And this revolution is not in the positive direction. All thanks to the capitalist economy, pollution, lifestyle diseases, junk food and what not, we are faced with bigger health challenges as we speak. So that means we need to address this problem faster. Reading news in the newspaper is like doing post-mortem. After the patient has died, you can't really do anything. The time has come that we prevent diseases before even it can happen. The time has come to diagnose diseases at an early stage and detect and alleviate. The time has come to save lives. The time has come that you and I understand the importance of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, there is a reason why I chose to start this video with a newspaper. And that is because, of course, newspapers today are obsolete. The same way, the healthcare technologies of today are going to be obsolete in the future. Now, I'm not saying that newspaper is irrelevant. The same way, those technologies will not become completely irrelevant. But newer technologies powered by AIML will come which will revolutionize healthcare. Now, as biotechnologist, as bioprofessional, life science researcher, you are going to play a pivotal role in this industry. So today, I'm going to talk about probably 10 to 15 different aspects of applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning in biology, especially in the healthcare sector, especially in the disease biology sector. Last time when I uh, made a video about latest in disease biology, it was well received and many of you said that how can we apply artificial intelligence and machine learning into disease biology. So to start with, first things first, once you have the disease and it has got diagnosed, if it is diagnosed at a late stage, then it is too late to save the patient. That is where artificial intelligence and machine learning will come into picture to perform early disease detection. Now, AI models will be able to analyze vast data set of genomic data from electronic, medical, as well as genetic data which will be available to the AI models and biomarker data. And combining all of that, artificial intelligence and machine learning will be able to uncover subtle patterns that may indicate possible early stage disease. For example, right now, I don't know, I may have an early onset of diabetes. Only when I go for a blood test, I may know that I may be having diabetes already. But what if I know the exact date and time when I'm going to have it in the future? Of course, time is going to be difficult, but probable, probable day that if you continue this way, this is the probable age when you can get diabetes so that I can take action and prevent it. So that is where early disease detection now, this is where big data biology will play a huge role. Now, by harnessing the power of big data and machine learning, artificial intelligence will be able to detect signals that would otherwise be invisible to the human clinicians. Now, that's something wherein we are looking at vast amount of data set, probably uh, a billion data set, and we are able to predict in a particular population that this is the pattern. So, by this age, they all are going to have this kind of a disease. Now, this will lead to early screening, early monitoring, and faster diagnosis and effective treatment strategies for such probable patients, right? Now, the third aspect will be obviously multidisciplinary approach. So if we are able to implement AI model, we will be able to detect early and that will lead to a closer collaboration in between computer scientists, biologists, clinician, and other healthcare professionals. And that is where you come into picture. So, multidisciplinary approach will be there for early disease detection. Followed by that, next which I have for you, next pointer which I have for you will be personalized medicine. As such, pharma companies can never ever make personalized therapies. Why? Because it's too difficult for them. But with the advent of computers, 
quantum computing or and the AI era, we have multiple data sets available. So utilizing that data set, we can personalize the therapy for a particular patient. Especially this comes handy in cases of rare diseases, cancer, HIV and such diseases. So this is where machine learning algorithms can predict individual responses to the treatment on the basis of person's unique genetic makeup, environmental uh, factors and lifestyle data. Now, we will be able to provide and deliver healthcare in such a way that it will be personalized in nature. We'll be able to deliver targeted therapies that are optimized for each patient's needs. And that is where our AI ML models will work like a charm. We will be able to optimize that dosing. Sometimes we all are giving one size fits all. So Dolo 650 means everybody is taking Dolo 650. What if you are needing a little higher dose or what if you are needing a little lower dose? That part, we will be able to analyze a patient's biological profile. We will be able to analyze this using AI model and then we will be able to recommend an optimal dosage. We will be able to recommend an optimal timing of medication. We will be able to improve the efficacy of medication and we will be able to reduce the risk of adverse side effects. So that is where personalized medicine, we can do a lot of things. Now, when it comes to disease biology, we will be able to do a disease risk prediction. For example, if you remember, uh, whoever was old during the COVID time, we said that, hey, you are old, so your chances of getting COVID is high and uh, recovering is very low. Recovery rates are very low, so let's prevent you, protect you from the disease, right? So that exactly how we did, that was human intelligence. But what if we could do it at a mass scale? We could analyze billions of population data and then we will be able to say that, okay, we will, there is a pattern in this. So this pattern uh, of all the individual data set which we have, we will be able to predict the risk of a particular disease in a particular location and then we will be able to do early intervention and uh, proactive care that will lead to preventive, preventing, preventing the onset of uh, serious co conditions and managing more effectively and efficiently. So that is where uh, personalized medicine will come into picture and AI models will catalyze that. Now followed by that, I have spoken a lot about drug di discovery and development, of course. That is something we know we will be able to accelerate the identification process of drugs. We will be able to do repurposing. We will be able to do optimized screening of all the drug molecules. And then we will be able to develop newer molecules using by adding more functional moieties right inside our computers using bioinformatics. So that is where, again, AIML will come into picture. Followed by that, we will have genomic analysis. So we will be able to unlock the disease insights. We will be able to use AI algorithms, machine learning algorithms, and we'll be able to empower the rapid process of analyzing vast data sets, genomic data sets, and we'll be able to identify mutations. We'll be able to identify what is the pattern associated with the particular disease and why it is happening to a particular type of people. And we will be able to use this technology, this technique to facilitate more precise and personalized approach to medicine. So genomic analysis is going to be a great enabler of precision medicine, like I told in the previous point. Medical image analysis. This is already happening. One of my friends has a startup in this already. So what we are doing is, like I said, newspaper is not going to be irrelevant news is still going to be relevant, right? News, the paper part is going to be relevant. So that is where medical imaging analysis, so X-rays will happen, MRIs will happen, but humans will not look at that data. Artificial intelligence will be looking at that data. Artificial intelligence and machine learning will first learn all the X-rays which has done in this world. They will be able to rapidly detect the abnormality. They will be able to automate the segmentation that this is good, this is bad, and this is ugly. And we will be able to improve our diagnostic accuracy because human eyes make mistakes. I know a person who, to whom uh, it was, uh, after looking at the x-ray, he was said that he doesn't have a fact fracture while there was a fracture and AI detected that, that he had a hairline fracture. So medical imaging analysis comes handy, uh, will be increased with the chances and the speed will increase because of AI ML. Now let's jump in and look at some of the predictive modeling of disease progression. Now, this is my favorite. Now, why do I say that? Because if we can predict how a disease is going to progress, then probably we will be ready with our remedy. 
So that is where the first thing which comes in my mind is early intervention. Now, as AI is advancing, the algorithm will be able to predict models. It will have predictive models which will forecast just like how you forecast the weather. You'll be able to forecast likely progression of a disease over a period of time. It will enable the doctors to intervene early and proactively manage patient care. This is something which is dream come true. What if we know that how the disease is going to deteriorate the person, person's body and we keep giving him the right uh, mix of uh, medis medicine and nutrients so that he recovers faster. Followed by that, personalized treatment, like I said, personalized medicine, now we will have personalized treatments also. And there will be optimized monitoring thanks to AI because predictive models can identify high-risk patients. They can recommend appropriate um, monitoring schedules and they will ensure that uh, the right resources are allocated to the right patients. I'll give you an example. So, uh, there is a startup in India which has got CCTVs in ICU and these CCTVs are constantly monitoring the patients and their facial expression, their body, posture and everything. And it is AI-enabled CCTV. So, the moment there is any kind of sudden movement, anything which needs intervention, then only it will alert the doctor and the doctor will instantly come. So doctors don't need to be in the ICU all the time. They could be sitting somewhere and uh, monitoring through ICU and they can predict. In fact, the AI will be able to predict that this person looks a little uneasy and he may need medical intervention and doctors will be there next to his bed even before that happens, right? So imagine within milliseconds, we can save lives now, right? So the next factor which I would like to bring up to your notice now in disease biology is biomarker discovery. Now, genomic data we have talked about. So this insight which we will get, genomic insight which we will get, will be analyzed by AI. And this complex genomic data set will, be, will help us uncover novel biomarkers, which is, which, is, which is yet to be discovered. And that we will be able to associate with a particular disease. And that will enable us to diagnose early and it will help us, you know, customize our treatment. So that's the first. The second is precision diagnostics. So we don't need to now go and do the X-ray of the entire body. We don't need to go and do the MRI of the entire thing. We will be able, able to identify a unique molecular signature and pattern. And AI will be able to analyze this through its algorithm. And it will help us develop highly sensitive and specific diagnostic tests for early dis disease detection. So we don't need to go and do uh, X-ray, MRI or whatever for the entire body, we just do it for that organ and we get all the results. Now, that, that will obviously enable us to do targeted therapy. So, we don't have to, you know, deliver uh, the drug to entire body. Probably we using AI, we'll be able to deliver it into the purse lines in that particular organ where there is a problem. So, that has been a dream till date, but hopefully in the future is going to be true. Now, followed by that, of course, we will have pathway analysis. We'll be able to decode complex pathways. How exactly a particular chemical is getting released and how, and what is a precursor, why it is happening and how can we prevent it, which is the organ which is releasing it. This is a powerful approach and to help, help us identify key points of intervention that could lead to more effective therapeutic strategies. And then we will be able to optimize our combination therapies. Many a times doctors give a combination of two drugs to help the patient recover. So if we have a pathway analysis done, we will be able to explore the synergistic drug combinations that can um, simultaneously um, target multiple points uh, along the disease pathway and we, we can uh, help the patient recover faster. So that's another uh, great addition to our current strategies which we already have. Now followed by that, we have epidemiology and outbreak prediction. This is something which was done during pandemic also. We, of course, that time AI was not that advanced but imagine that by looking at the pattern of data set which we are receiving from various sewage various hospitals various clinics on our on our screen earlier we could just look at it and think okay this is what is happening but what if we our ai could analyze all of that and predict that the next phase of a wave of the pandemic is going to happen and in which part of the world it will happen and we will be able to control it so AI algorithms will be able to analyze a vast amount of epidemiologic data sets from diverse sources such as social media, healthcare records, uh, environmental sensors, and um, sewage water, and uh, reports from doctors, 
diagnostic labs and then we will be able to collate all this public health data and we will, we will be able to predict uh, that this particular disease is going to happen in this particular area. So that's great. And in fact, we are working on one such um, project right now for a Netherlands-based company. I cannot disclose the name, but that is an amazing insight that if we can prevent it, we can save lives. I've always talked about virtual screen, screening and uh, molecular modeling, right? So that, of course, it helps us accelerate drug discovery. Then we will be able to do in silico optimization. That means we will be able to use AI, ML, and computational biology. And we will be able to rapidly screen millions of chemical compounds, functional groups. And we'll be able to identify drug candidates and optimize their properties such as binding affinity, uh, selectivity, pharmacokinetics, and all of that. And then we'll be able to give the right dosage on, in, within the therapeutic window and get our results. So that's where virtual screening and molecular modeling will come into picture. Now, one aspect where a lot of companies spend billions of dollars and th this slows down the discovery, drug discovery process is clinical trials, right? More money goes in clinical trials than in the development of drugs, right? Is that any? So we will be able to improve the clinical trial efficiency. We'll be able to develop algorithms which can be suitable for a candidate and we can conduct clinical trials. We can control clinical trial outcomes. We'll be able to monitor continuously and we'll be able to streamline the entire process using AI. We'll be able to predict the trial outcomes even before the trial is concluded and we'll be able to do personalized monitoring. Many times the patient has done some mistake and because of that the entire clinical trial fails. Or maybe they have a behavior which make, makes it fail. So that we'll be able to prevent. Now of course we have also seen the usage of natural language processing for medical literature and this is something very simple. I will not cover it in this video but uh, I hope you already know it. What exactly this means is extracting the relevant information from the medical literature and then providing this with, to the doctors in real time, informing the clinical uh, clinicians and diagnostic labs that, okay, this uh, particular data uh, you know, relates to this particular type of disease, so probably this is the disease. So natural language processing will help us there. Then we will be having predictive diagnostics, AI-powered diagnostic tools. We will have chatbots, virtual assistants, augmented diagnostics, and early detection powered by AI. All of that happening right within the next six to eight months. Now, this is what makes me really um, worried because most of our biology students are not ready for it. And all of this is happening and still you don't get job, then it is a waste of time. That is why Biotechnica has AI ML in biology training program. All the details is given in the description. You can join us, learn with us for 30 days and you can become AI expert and then publish papers with us, get work experience and recommendation letters and then you can win the world. Coming back to the video now, predictive maintenance of medical equipment. Many times medical equipment breaks down. We'll be able to use AI to do that, right? So probably I have covered till now, I think 14 to 15 different ways artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize healthcare, especially disease biology. But now my question to you is, are you ready for this future? I am. And why do I say that? Because our team is working on projects, developing these solutions for other companies. And I want you to learn so that you can work with us or in these companies as a maintenance engineer, as a development engineer of AI in biology, as a data scientist, as a big data biologist, as a bioinformatician, as a clinician, or as an expert of AI in biology. Remember, this economy works on supply and demand. So if you are rare to be found, then your demand is high. That is why I said, learn AI in biology faster. Implement AI in biology in your research and then you can also do this. You can raise your collar and say, yes, I am the guy who is in demand everywhere. Right? So go ahead and enroll in Biotechnica's AI and Biology course, Computational Biology and Bioinformatics course. And I'll see you soon as a successful big data biologist in our country. Thank you. Take care.